everybody. Alongside Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore. We welcome you ringside for a much anticipated. Let's set the table for you and get ready to dish up this big night of action. Oscar De La Hoya's had this experience so many times. Success has always come on the back end of these. Alvarez is now making his way to the ring, and you can see how focused he is for the task at hand. Let's have a good clean fight. Touch him up and let's go. Opening round here. See if they go the full 12 tonight. Good block there by Alvarez. Teddy, I'm going to be kind in simply describing one of our fighters tonight as just having low stamina. He's going up against a guy who's a high motor guy tonight. Yeah, what I think he has to do, and I'll be kind too, is he just has to go for broke, go for the Hail Mary. Jump right on the faster guy. Wow, a big flush blow, the left hand by Oscar De La Hoya. Scored well up top. Get in there! Halfway through round number one. A nice block by Alvarez. comes home for him and he walked right into it we're seeing a lot of work to the body here early on by him teddy is that a certain mentality these guys that commit to being a body puncher yeah because they understand that the body punching you know that's not something that's glorious that's not something that you know like a great left hook on the chin bang it gets results right away they understand that that's something that pays off later and something you got to start early and stay with Fast combinations to the body. Bien rapidito. He doesn't like those shots. Bro, bro, punches, okay? Don't walk into him when I'm throwing a punch. underway
punched by the Golden Boy, Oscar De La Hoya. And I love the way he delivered that, Teddy. Yeah, he's using his feet to set up his offense. You don't always see that, but you see it there. Covers up nicely, gets rid of his opponent's body shot. Halfway through this round. Oscar De La Hoya is very proud of his Mexican-American heritage. He comes from East L.A., but yet there was always a struggle at certain stages of his career to align with that demographic compared to how easily Fernando Vargas, the Southern California rival, had it with that audience. I think he felt like, and he still feels that way, and to a certain extent that drives him on. He sort of had to earn their respect, and he didn't get their respect so much. He felt like an outsider who was trying to prove that he was Mexican, you know. And in a lot of ways, people said, you know, he didn't fight Mexican enough. You know, he didn't, he didn't look like a guy, you know, a Mexican warrior. You know, this was the golden boy. And he was always trying to prove that he was more than just that. And in some ways, that has been the fire that has been with him. Alvarez is putting forth an effort, but he's not being effective in that regard. No, he's not. He's not landing when he needs to land. And it kind of reminds me, he's a banger too. He can punch a little. It reminds me of an old saying that a trainer once told me. It doesn't mean anything to have a big punch. It's kind of like having a military weapon, a bomb. What good is it if you don't have a missile to get it to the target? Right now, he needs a missile to get that punch. He needs to set it up, and he's not doing that. Round number three is underway. Oh, what an uppercut from De La Hoya. Uppercut, uppercut. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep moving, keep moving. Move your head. Alvarez's punch is far off the target. De La Hoya's knowledge of the game is showing through. Three ways to defend, one of them is to block. He did it there well. He's showing what a skilled fighter he is with the counter punching. Well, the old timers used to say, when you're calm in there, when you're in control in there, you can make him do what you want. He made him tie his shoelaces right there. There you go. Nice block that time. It was intended to the head. Good snapping jab. That's what you need to get inside. Hey, Joe, if you're going to rob a bank, you need a smoke screen so the guards don't see you coming. You want to get inside? Use the jab. Not able to land the uppercut. Good. Good. Just 10 seconds to go in this round. And that's the end of round three. Keep counterattacking, okay? When he throws, make him miss and counter. You have to start throwing in volume. Watch the water in the corner. Throw in volume. Don't fight his fight. Jab and move. You gotta fight. You gotta throw more. Dave La Hoya is pitching a shutout right now on Teddy's scorecard. First three rounds all going on his side of the ledger. Oh, boy, that right hand got right to him and put him down.
Goes down for the first time, but you can just get a sense that he's gonna be okay. It doesn't look like he's that damaged. No, exactly, Joe. That was just a brush fire, but he doesn't want it to become a forest fire. So he's got to think in his head, why did I get caught? Yep, yep. Unable to connect by the golden boy, Oscar De La Hoya. 90 seconds to go in round number four. Protecting his head well with his guard. Side to side! Oh, what a whiff by Alvarez. Dismisses his opponent's headshot. What a great job. He gave one right back in return. Nice work by Oscar De La Hoya. De La Hoya's defense. Is it ever good? Look at how easy he's able to block those punches. Well placed counter punch by Oscar De La Hoya's tag. Momentum has shifted. Teddy, explain this to me. Hey, this fighter was just staggered and stunned. Now all of a sudden he's defending beautifully. Yeah, because he's on instincts now. Before he was thinking, he was overthinking. That happens out in life in a lot of places. And now he's not. Now just naturally, instinctively, survival mode is there. He's doing all the things, Joe, that he was taught in the gym. Things he couldn't do before because he was worried about doing them. He had too many things clogging his head. Deep breath. Deep breath. Relax, relax. Are you all right? I need you to keep your hands up. Alvarez's corner tried to steady him and give him some sound advice with the 60 seconds they had to work with him. But keep in mind, he was knocked down in that last round. Well, the most important thing is his experience. Has this happened to him before? Can he justify it in his mind that he's overcoming before? Also, his corner, did they revive him? that they do their job during that minute rest. Do you see any way in which he can take his opponent's aggression and turn it against him? Yeah, the perfect way. I mean, boxing 101, counterpunching. You got a guy coming at you, no better way than to change his mind. Make him miss, make him pay. Look at that, the hook came home with ease. The left hand coming into play by Alvarez. Solid right by Oscar De La Hoya. Halfway into round number five here. That's it, just like that. Hoya's got a way of just getting away from that punch. Seconds to go in this round. His opponent wanted the body. He wouldn't give it to him. You can almost see it just by the way a fighter sits down on their stool at the end of a round. As we come to the end of this round, you can tell that he's full of confidence and he can't wait to get right back out there and continue doing what he's doing. Well, you're right. The first thing that I notice is his back's not leaning against the corner pad. You know, that's a defeated fighter. That's a fighter. He don't want to go back. Something bad happened to him. You know, he's leaning back like that. You have to pick him up from the stool. He's got all his weight forward. He can't wait to get going. You know that he's positive. You know that he had a good round.
as another round gets underway, it gets us thinking how much more of this will we see. Hard to envision this fight going the distance with how lopsided it's been. Move your head. Keep moving. Keep moving. Way to block there. Dave Hoya is keeping his guard up very, very well. Teddy, does it help to have the speed that he has? Uh, sure. Anytime you have speed and you can put it into the equation where whatever you're doing, it has to be technically right, but now you put speed, you're doing it even better. You're doing it at a higher level. You're doing it right. And he ties up on the inside. Thought he had his target, but way off to the side with the uppercut. That's what I want to see. Keep doing what you're doing. Come on. Here's one for you now, he says. Right back with the left hand. Not able to land the headshot. One, two. One, two. One of us. He clinches when he gets to the inside. Count down the final moments of this round. Dave La Hoya is showing that he's got some defense of his own. He got away from that punch. And this round comes to an end. Dave La Hoya is well conditioned to the realities of this harsh business of boxing. But even though we know what we've seen out of some ringside scorecards through the years, I'd be shocked if everybody doesn't have him ahead in this fight right now. Yeah, but never be shocked in this business because you never know with these blind judges sometimes. I hate to say it that bluntly, but time and time again, you just get shocked when you hear the score at the end of the night. He's smart. He's not giving me enough punches. Start of this round, start to the second half of this fight. First half of this fight, he completely dominated the action, Teddy. Yeah, but you know what? It's kind of like they said in that movie, The Gambler. You know, they don't pay off at halftime. <laughs> and out of nowhere, things can turn like that, Teddy. Everything was looking good. Now it's looking bad for him. Well, that's exactly why, because nothing was coming at him. His opponent wasn't throwing back. He got a little lax, and he paid a price. Well, that was his intention, and that's what he's doing. Not engaging in the fight, but clinching. Alvarez is finding out right now that this counter-punching style is not getting the results he needs in these middle rounds. What is the answer? Well, when a guy's not coming in and walking in, you can't counter-punch. I mean, he's not, he's not giving you the kind of turf that you need. Now you have to find a way to create your offense, to lead a little bit. That starts with the jab, getting off first. At the halfway point of round seven, And now just wasting everybody's time holding on. Good effective work with that straight right hand. And he's just not engaging in the fight. He clinches again. Hook to the head by Alvarez. Good work defensively by the golden boy, Oscar De La Hoya. Plus, he landed that counter punch. Yeah, and he forced him to punch. He made him, he threw it out of him, and then he timed him beautifully. You're okay. You're okay. There you go. I want you to bang the head and the body, all right? 
Upstairs, downstairs, and over again. We gotta watch the water in the corner. Too much. De La Hoya's seen this fight go exactly the way he's wanted it to go. He's up big on your scorecard, Teddy, through seven rounds. And most of all, he's got all the gas left in the tank to finish up strong. Yeah, he's not looking for a petrol station. You know, sometimes you've been down a road a little bit and you start looking for that gas station. He doesn't have to worry about that. Smooth sell. He's tired. Alvarez has been able to let loose. He's throwing punches. He's just not landing enough of them. Well, he's throwing them from a little too far away. He's not getting into that punching chamber. He's starting to launch him just a little too soon, and his opponent is warned. Now he ties up the there. You're not and banging away he goes. How about that? He goes from being the victim to handing out the punishment. Hoya's still in a tough spot here. Don't get fooled just thinking he beat the count and everything's fine. And I'm not so sure that he can grab. So what you got to do now if you're a trainer, the way you taught him in the gym is you don't want to go grab because you might leave yourself open. Move your head when he comes to you, then you grab him. Alvarez is rocked, and both men are damaged in this round. Wild stuff. Well, he may be in bad shape, but all of a sudden, all of a sudden, he's able to avoid punches and survive. You know, boxing is a funny business. It's a metaphor for life. You know, sometimes you have somebody outside, and they don't say what they want to say. They have to have a drink, a little alcohol to start saying the things that are on their mind. Sometimes a fight is no different, you know? He gets hurt, and now all of a sudden, all his inhibitions are gone. And now he's doing all the things he's supposed to do because he's not thinking about anything except the things he should have been thinking about. It's automatic. Blocks that belt line well. How about that? What a round we just saw. Both men were able to get to the other. Both men seemingly hurt in that round. And the kind of round where a judge really has to do his job. Everyone else does their job. Trainers, managers, we're trying to do ours. But now it's up to the judges to really look at that and find where they can separate the two fighters. Relax, relax, relax. You got to relax. You got to move out there. Move, move, move. You got any more of these? Now, I'm great. You good? Alvarez has recovered nicely here. The start of this round, and he is proving to me at least that what happened in that last round is having no effect on this round. Keep moving! De La Hoya is making this so that it's becoming a very frustrating night for his opponent. I mean, when your defense is that sharp, it can just drive your opponent crazy. Yeah, it can. First of all, it can start to break down. You know, we always look at the physical things in life and anything. You know, you, you're pounding a guy and you're going to break the guy down. Hey, if you're just smart and you're slick like this guy and you're making a guy miss, you start to break him down. He's breaking the guy down that way. 90 seconds into the ninth round. Oh, he just misses with that headshot. He's doing what you're doing. Right to the body. One, two. One, two. One of those. One of those. Tried to land that upstairs and was off the mark. <laughs> you got this one. That's great stuff. He fires one right back after taking one. Gotta love the work by Alvarez.
Come on now. Don't let this guy rest. Keep working. Keep throwing. One, one, two. One, one, two. Never felt a beat like this. Keep the pressure up. Left, right, left, you right. You need to double corner. up your punches all night. Alvarez is back. Look at him here in the start of this round. Remember, he got tagged hard in that last round. Well, that's the reward you get when you have a good camp and you get yourself in top shape. Excellent uppercut by Oscar De La Hoya. He's throwing a lot of punches here. Now his opponent is showing very, very good movement. What adjustments can he make to deal with that movement? Well, Joe, when you're fighting a guy who's smart, who's hard to hit, first of all, you got to shorten those punches up. If they're wide, they have no chance at all. And you got to go to the one place that's not moving. Guess where that is? Downstairs. A well-targeted jab that time. He missed that uppercut. And you can see he wanted to do that as he holds on there. That's a tried and true method that works out very well. The counterpunch landing by Oscar De La Hoya. Getting back up to his feet after being knocked down. A battering hook. Ricardo Alvarez is... Not hitting his mark there going upstairs. Coming to the end of round number 10. 10 seconds to go. Oh, and the right hand comes into play by Alvarez. See, keep on. Don't just walk in. Walk in with head moving side to side. Stay away from the power hand, okay? Keep circling away from that power hand. I need you to keep moving. Here you go. He has a slight lead on your scorecard, Teddy, but nothing is guaranteed at this point. There's still a lot of work to be done as we start round number 11. Yeah, Joe, he's got to keep that offense up. You know, a lot of times you get to the end part of a fight like this, and you're a little bit ahead. At least we have him ahead. And you start to let up on the offense a little bit. You know, you concentrate more on the defense, and the guy gets back into the fight. Keep that offense going. Pay attention to the defense, but keep the offense going. Dave Hoya is trying to get back in this round after being knocked down in the last round. But with just 60 seconds between rounds, Teddy, how much can really happen? How much can really benefit a fighter who was knocked down? Well, a lot has to happen. First of all, you hit him with that sponge. Some cold water on top of the head where you revigorate him a little bit. You know, get his senses back a little bit. And you have to talk to him. Once he calms down, once you physically get him back on track, you look to see if he's okay, and then you have to tell him why he got dropped to begin with. Halfway through this 11th round. Oh, oh. oh and he's got something for him himself, and it's a left hand. And you see what he can do when he sends that right to the head. <sighs> Hoya's movement's really helping him out, avoiding that punch. Oh, 
off to the side. A little swing and a miss going upstairs. Last 10 seconds of this 11th round. This has been a very entertaining fight. A little time to reflect here at the end of this round. My thoughts being this. I would really be surprised if we go to a decision here. It just has that kind of feel to it. Yeah, it has a feel to me like going to one of those places where you can eat all the pasta you can for one price, you know? And some guys get carried away. They eat about five bowls. Well, these guys, they're going to have a stomach ache at the end. Somebody is going to wind up not standing at the end. You need to come out throw punches. You need to capitalize on his misses, okay? I want to see that counter hook. Make him pay for his misses. And this is the final round. 12 rounds going at you. And this is the final round, round number 12 coming at you. Scores up top with a left. Carries that punch intended for the head. Missed the target with that hook. With a hook. Back to the body. Nice block by the golden boy, Oscar De La Hoya. He tried to nab him up top, but was unable to connect. De La Hoya's timing with his head movement has been ideal. We have not seen his opponent being able to land anything clean up top tonight. No, because his opponent is not making the proper adjustments. You know when that big shot, the left crashed home. Keep moving. Did you see that? How is he gonna survive this? Once again, he hits the deck. He's gonna have to find a way. <laughs> Hoya is going to have to pull himself together here. Now he beat the count, but still a lot of work to do. Yeah, a lot of work because he doesn't have the benefit of his legs. Can't move around there wobbly right now. So what he's got to do is grab on a little bit and walk. Walk to the ropes. Kill some time. Make the referee come in between you and break you. That was not well targeted by Alvarez. He snaps a jab. And they will bring it home in the last 10 seconds of this final round. Which way did it go after a very exciting fight now in the books? Let's send it up to the ring to find out. Alvarez is your winner by majority decision. Very close fight, but more importantly, a satisfying fight for everybody, especially the fans. Yeah, good one for the fans. Glad you tuned in to see it with us. I'm Joe Tessitore alongside Teddy Atlas saying thanks for being with us.